We are here because we are dedicated to helping the entire CrossFit community. Determined to elevate coaches, box owners, athletes, and everything in between, we believe that this mission will begin right here, right now. While this time and this goal begins with you, our hope is that you take this fire ignited within you and weave it into your own life with the same unrelenting passion to give those you have the privilege of coming in contact with the best hour of their day. Fern, at some point in box ownership, box owners all, I think, get to the point where it's like, hey, things are going okay. Things are running. Let's complicate this. Let's make our lives more challenging, add more stress, spend more money unnecessarily. Would you agree with that statement? I I have not only agreed with that statement, but I have executed on that poor idea many, many, many times as a box as a box, as a box owner. When when do you think was the first time your box was running like, hey, this is going well. I'm making, you know, 30, 40 K, like paying the bills, have time to spend with the kids, Jess. Let's make things worse. When was the first time that happened? I, I know when it happened for me, but when for you? 2019. <laughs> Oh, not till then. That's pretty good that you yeah, that well, way. so like I mean, well, I just I just did say I just did things so poorly prior to 2015. And then in 2015, like righted the ship, put it on, you know, put it put it upright and doing like really, really, really well for about four years until I until I basically got I don't know, greedy for lack of better terms. I was like, let's do 78 things. And um zero of them panned out, shockingly. Um and in 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 that endeavor, lost an astronomical amount of money. So, and, and, and I mean that's really what we're talking about today. It's it's not just hey, for for one, I think box owners need to be able to. I don't think the complacency is the right word. It's success, and I think one box owners don't know how to measure success, and they look at the box down the road, and they're constantly comparing themselves like they have more members they're making more money you know they have something that we don't have where it's like who cares they say comparison is the thief of joy you know something like that so remember don't compare yourself to anyone else but what do you got going on over there dude what's oh my goodness you can tell that i'm like distracted over here no yeah it's not hard to tell when you're distracted well my wife is trying to take rocky for a walk and Rocky doesn't want to leave the office, so he's crept back in. <laughs> now she's slowly. She wearing a Santa Claus hat? Is your wife wearing a Santa Claus no, hat? No, it's not a Santa Claus hat. She's wearing oh. a uh, oh. headband and my flannel oh. because her flannels aren't fitting her Fair anymore. Enough. So I'm up. In, I'm in the upstairs office again. I moved to the basement. We're actually putting in an ice tub. Where? In the basement. So you have the sauna and the ice tub in the Yeah, so I have a little space. It's probably like five by ten. It's not huge. But that was the goal with that little space was to have the sauna and the ice tub. But they're making a racket down there. So she has allowed me to take over her office now up here. So it's it's very distracting nonetheless. I, I, I don't do well with no distractions. I don't I certainly don't do okay. No, with, no, no with we're aware. Yeah, yeah. And when I say we, I mean the listeners, yeah. <laughs> we, we all got a we all have, we all we all had to listen to UP. You know? I was going to say, we got a comment on the fact that I had to pee. Yeah. The I, I think day. the comment was, this is the equivalent of, of uh, drinking coffee while coaching a class, I think. And I was like, yeah, I, I, I don't disagree. It was, it was quintessentially unprofessional. So well done, sir. Well I done. do have to pee at times when I coach, especially Mondays. I coach three in a row. I try to get in between classes, but there are times, depending on when, you know, I, obviously I try to do it actually during the workout usually or maybe you're a true if you're a true professional you would suck it up and just pee your pants well uh, sometimes i wear a diaper men's small well you are old so yeah <laughs> but anyway what i was saying is it's not complacency it's just understanding success and i think for so many people when we think about success it's always more more of this more of that and that's what we're going to talk about today it's it, rather than just settling down continuing to to grow what you're great at it becomes what else can i do and oftentimes one of the first things box owners try to do is well let's add specialty classes there yeah so i would agree there's it's probably it's typically one of two 
one of two issues. Either they get greedy, and I don't mean when I say greedy, I, and I refer to myself when I say this too. I don't, I don't mean greedy in the sense of like greed, like a like hoarding money. Greed, greedy in the sense of like they want more, they want to do more, they want to try more. Uh, and then the other, the other time this typically happens is when is thinking that this is going to fix the problem, right? So I've got a problem, and that by adding other things, this will somehow fix my problem by by adding this other thing that I'm, that I'm just probably not going to do very well. And I've done a little bit of mixture of both admittedly. Uh, primarily most of mine is, it, have been uh, more along like the greedy lines, meaning like, Oh, I'm like, Oh, let's try uh, this whole thing over here. And let's try this thing over here because this is things are going really well. So, and all of that, you know, this is like early to actually eight, actually, no, I take it back 18. It was 18, 2018. So yeah, this was like three and a half years ago. So the, um, the, so yeah, in that, with hind in it, like using hindsight, it's one of those things where like mine was like, oh, like we can do more and we can help more people and we can do all that stuff without really identifying the fact that like, there's still a long way. Most people massively underestimate what they can do with it, with what they have. And it's not even close to being optimized or, or has it reached peak? And, and I would, I don't want to say they undershoot by a hundred percent. Optimized is probably the best word you can use there. And if you're considering any specialty classes or anything at your box and you think about optimization, I would ask probably, many questions, but the first two being, are you at your capacity for what you're offering? And probably the next most important question is, are you at the threshold for price? Right. So, threshold for price capacity. And then let's say you, let's, let's go, let's go down the road and let's say, let's say, let's say you are, you, you've checked both of those boxes. Like we, we have this, We've, you know, we're at threshold for capacity for the hour for the classes that we have, and we've we've reached market the the market's threshold for cost. And then I'm like, okay, we got to do something else. Then the other mistake is you you just randomly slap something else on top of this without figuring out going through this planning process and figure out like, is this a good match? And then how do we integrate it with what we do so that it all works together? And I talk about this all the time with regard to affiliates. It's like the biggest hang up in affiliates is no matter how many phone calls we get on, this is gonna this is gonna be the fatal flaw, which is like I've got all these ideas and they exist in silos, right? So like I need retail. I'm gonna go order some church t-shirts. Uh, I should run a specialty course or a or a workshop, and I go do that. But but in no way, shape, or form do they fit together intentionally. And then you slap on one more thing that costs money, time, resources, all this stuff that is that is also not integrated into your core offering. And that's that's ultimately the problem. It's, it's it's 15 ideas, none of which are connected. And then it turns into a hot mess. And and now I'm and none of them aid each other. They all steal from each other is usually how it works. Yeah, and, and it often starts with one member saying, Oh, I'd love to have this course, you know, or class, Olympic lifting. Can we everybody wants here? everybody wants yoga. That's how that's how it happens. It, it's it's true. Like yoga is, especially <laughs> this day and age. No, but that and, will be the that will be the statement that will come into your that will that will fly into your office. Somebody will walk by and they will throw a good idea grenade into your office, and that grenade, when it blows up, will be like everybody wants yoga, and you'd be like everybody does want yoga. When the reality <laughs> is, three people want yoga, and at which point you have just torpedoed your own thing because you fell for it yet again. Right, and the truth of the matter is the people that want yoga are doing yoga at a yoga studio where yoga is good. Right. And you need to not be afraid to turn people, I wouldn't even say you're not turning people away, but direct people to somewhere else. I think or, that- Or, yeah, so yes, number one, if you are going to bring them in-house, in I, I, I have I actually don't know of a scenario where somebody hasn't done this. I would love, so if you have done this, then kudos to you where that what they will do is so let's use yoga it's an easy one They're like we're going to use yoga but we're only going to charge five bucks for people to do yoga and i'm like if people are already paying 15 the market is 15 why in god's name would you charge five particularly if you're like we've got a great yoga instructor they have 98 million certifications they they are you know the the next better coming of bikram 
right? The non creepy version of Beakram, right? So, and then you're just like, but we'll charge five bucks. And I'm like, well, that doesn't help anybody. That doesn't help the yoga instructor. It doesn't aid you. You just undercut the whole thing, which immediately tells everybody it's not worth, it's not that good. Yeah, you don't want to be the cheapest in town and you probably don't want to be the most expensive with anything. But, you know, this is just another example. I heard, I was listening to Seth Godin this morning and it was really much in line with this. And he was talking about how he was a vegetarian or vegan or something. And he was going to this uh, restaurant in New York and he would get the Brussels sprouts with bacon without bacon. And so just Brussels sprouts. Correct. <laughs> Which I, I have this, you know, belief that no one actually likes Brussels sprouts. It's just, it's become pretty hip to either sprinkle bacon or something good on them, but no one actually likes Brussels sprouts. Uh, no, there's some, there's some, there's some legit places in Louisiana, like in the new Orleans area where I've had some, some Brussels sprouts that'll knock your face yeah, off. Yeah, But it's they're what they're made good. with. Like you're not just no, boiling up some Brussels sprouts and eating them as a snack. Well, I mean, you could say that about anything. Like nobody just likes to eat a head of lettuce. That's but not people good like either. plain bacon. You don't need to do anything fancy. And I like bacon. You don't need to Wait, do anything different. How's it's it beef. different? Everybody likes beef. <laughs> I was just saying, but I like this fruit I like. Right, but what are you going to put on fruit? More fruit? Chocolate. That's called dessert. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that Russ Green? I don't know if he's still involved in CrossFit, but he had uh, a really not great... Not to my knowledge. I think he's working for the Koch brothers. I think he's working for a big lobbying firm. That's right. But he had a great tweet recently, and he was like, you know, about COVID. You know, everyone's preaching X, Y, and Z. I can't remember the tweet but no one's talking about the fact that people are eating dessert for breakfast right i mean but that's that's been you, you know yeah. with, uh, we but had, the way he said it <laughs> russ green is just really intelligent we uh we had this we had a guy uh at the, a recent level too i won't say where just to uh just save everybody some heartache but we were i was given the nutrition lecture and the the uh, we were reading through the bios before the seminar, like we always do. And this guy's a pathologist. So I was like, I was, you know, like I'm making up a name. It's not his name. I was like, Billy, you know, pathologist. And I'm like talking about the health and wellness. And I was like, what we were trying to do is get all these, these markers over here and make it a hedge against sickness. And I was like, you know, Billy, wouldn't you agree that the best thing you could do to combat COVID is be healthy. And he was like, he kind of looked at me, he kind of like had a weird, like put me on the spot thing. And he was just like, I uh, recommend social distancing and wearing a mask. And I was like, oh, okay. I see, see what you're doing there. I see what you're doing there. Oh, he was like, I I will not be giving any advice uh, in this setting. And I was like, I feel you, brother. No worries. Got it. Well, that's interesting. So anyway, going back to the Seth Godin story, he was saying eventually he did this a handful of times. And one time he comes in and the owner or his server, whoever it was, said something like, you know, we have 22 items on the menu only two of them don't include meat. We recommend you go to this restaurant down the road. And he says right. that at that point, the restaurant became, I forget the name of the restaurant, but it was a very, at this point now, it's a really famous restaurant. Mm -hmm. And he said that was the moment because they realized what they're good at. And they also realized, I don't need to serve this dude. I need 2000 people that love coming here. Right. And the same holds true at your box. You don't, need to, you don't need to serve the yogis. You don't mm -hmm. even need to serve the people that want to specialize in Olympic lifting. I mean, yes, there's balance, there's blends, there's everything. But the point is, if you want to become who you are as a box owner, if you want to become CrossFit XYZ, you need to know exactly who you serve. Mm -hmm. And adding specialty courses probably deters you from that. Yeah, you, if you do everything, you do nothing. You know, and that that's like the fatal flaw. Is like I'm going to do all these things. What, like, I, I would challenge you to go the other way. Like, could you be so good at what you do that when a yogi comes into your gym, that they that they are now a convert to a CrossFitter? And you I've can got do a both. couple of. I do both. Right, you could do both, but I've got a couple who are who are who are CrossFit zealots now who were prior yoga instructors at studios and now are just like i stretch occasionally but this is my thing now and i'm like we, cool the owner of the local yoga studio comes to our classes uh you, you know the, to cross because you i mean it, you realize as a yogi like all this flexibility is meaningless if you're not strong 
I mean, the, the real takeaway for this whole thing is, number one, without knowing anything about your gym, we could assume that it could be improved. The end, right? So if that is the case, what sense does it make to divert time, attention, and resources to this, to this other thing that we could also agree you will not do very well? Not only will you not do it very well, you will do it w like extremely poorly relative to other places where this is their core offering, right? So if you were to compare like a, a yoga class in a CrossFit gym to the experience and everything that goes into running a yoga studio and the experience you have there, it's, again, you're talking about like, I've got uh, a bicycle with a flat tire compared to a Bentley. They're not, they're not even in the same world. There's, a, I'm not speaking from experience here, but there's a reason why, you know, having a side piece never works. I know you can't speak from experience either. I'm not just saying that because I'm afraid of Jess, but I know that you can't speak from that. Um, but it's true, right? Like, think about anything. I mean, that's a crazy analogy, cheating on your spouse. But there's a reason that shit doesn't work. It's because you're not putting attention there. You're not. You're taking away from the thing that matters. It should matter to you that you need to foster, that you need to grow, that you need to work on every day. And you're trying to divert attention, like. It's obvious. We all know it. And the same is going to happen at your box. You start to, oh, okay, your members are going to see things like, oh, you're getting fancy collars for the weightlifting course, or you're spending money on yoga mats or yoga blocks. Or They're like, I don't care about that. Yeah. Why aren't you buying a new uh, Echo bike? Those, those, it, you know, those yeah. things happen. That, that's a real scenario where your members are like, I'm paying for this. And now for the, you know, they see it. They're not dumb. The four people over there that do yoga Thursdays at five o'clock that you spent $200, that could have been, you know, a new, a new barbell. It could have been something right. that everyone can enjoy. You could paint the damn bathroom, like stuff like that. Get a bidet. And if, you, and if you don't think, yeah, right. If you could get multiple bidets. For you have bucks. bidets then, right? I have bidets everywhere, my friend. Yeah, because Cassidy posted on our post. Yeah, we have about, bidets in all. We have bidets in all of the bathrooms at our gym. As by the well. way, somebody in the best hour Instagram has a question for you about saunas. Oh yeah, I saw it. Katie sent it to me. I haven't had a chance to answer it. I've been coaching my face off today. The um, but where I was going with that is the if you want to do this well. There, I think there's a couple of things that you can do. So for instance, you know, I've talked about it occasionally, but um, I am going to have Phil on the show. So we do have a specialty offerings at CrossFit Rife. And I'm going to be very forthcoming with this. Much of this is pure unadulterated luck. Well, yeah. Meaning and I want to make sure two individuals, right? Like two individuals ended up in the same place. We had like a weird common bond with a lot of things that happened and it just worked out well. So there's there, like, and I say luck because number one, Phil just happens to be here. Number two, there's not, there's just not a big conglomerate of like really talented weightlifting coaches, true blue weightlifting uh, weightlifting coaches. I don't mean a CrossFitter who converted to weightlifting and likes to coach weightlifting. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about somebody who has coached, you know, like dozens of dozens of national qualifiers and has uh, has competed in extremely high levels and and comes from a lineage of weightlifting coaches. Like we have that here, and that's very 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 rare. I mean, very rare. So I'm not against it. My problem is it's hard to find the right people to run these programs because they typically are few and far between. And then you have to make sure that you give them the resources and compensate them fairly in order to do that. Now, if you can find one of those people, then my recommendation is run with it because now going back to our previous conversations about what makes you different, that is one thing that makes you different. That is one of the things that people recognize about CrossFit Rife is like, hey, if you're going to go over there, you get more than just CrossFit. There's a lot of 10-pound brains in that building with regard to fitness, and Phil happens to be one of them who's a specialist at weightlifting. So in that scenario, like, yes, do it. We're not saying don't do it, but you need to do it right. You need to do it well. They have their own space. It's separated. They run their programs the way they want to. We, you know, we have our agreement the way that that works. And all I do is help them crush. That's it. I do not tell them how to coach weightlifting. 
I, and I think the big takeaway from what you're saying is you have one of, you know, those people. You are not doing it. You are not right. asking your coaches to do it. You, you mean, you're basically subleasing space. That's not how it, I mean, that's not the agreement, but yes. But, you know, that's right. That, yeah. And that but makes, I'm suble yeah, but you're right. But it is a, it is a, it is a, a complementary service, right? That meshes very well. I think the bigger point would be it's not taxing the system. No, not at all. If, if I was just, I was just, no, it, it's, it's a perfect, it's a perfect pairing. I just had, we have a, uh, we have quite a few physical therapists in here and one of them, he was just like, Hey, I talked to Phil and I'm going to go weightlift probably starting in February. I'm like, cool. Like, go do it. Just tell me when you want me to switch that over. And it's a done deal, bro. Like I tell people that all the time. They're like, ah, I want to do a little bit of weightlifting. I'm like, we've got one of the best weightlifting coaches in the country, 60 feet to your right. Just go over there and lift weights. Yeah, and you're still making money when that person stays in the in the walls of Rife. Right. But in, I think the difference would be we're saying don't add yoga because you don't know how to teach yoga. It's probably in your gym space. So now you can't, you're either providing shitty yoga or you're taking away from hours that your members should be doing CrossFit. But if, you know. Or you're not charging to make it worth your and the instructor's time. So then it's just a drag. Like right. even if it's even if it's not in like a uh, a prime time hour, it's still not really it's not in air quotes worth it because if we were to break out a calculator, the reality is you'd probably be losing money. Right, but if the right yoga instructor walks into your doors, I do CrossFit and I understand how I can blend yoga to benefit your members. And by the mm -hmm. way, I can do it at Thursdays at eight thirty at night, and I have a group of people looking to go somewhere, and I'm not going to interrupt your classes and. You know, I'm going to pay you 50% of what I bring in. You know, th th we're not saying don't do yoga. We're not saying don't add specialty classes. We're saying make sure, A, like Fern said, you're optimizing what you're currently doing. And if you are going to add anything, anything that just takes bandwidth, make sure it's worth that bandwidth. You know, for, right, for you, the bandwidth of uh, Phil is insignificant right it's it's probably nothing to you and it puts a little extra money in your pocket if like you have, what do you i'm like what do you need that's yeah. the bandwidth that it requires what do you need are you guys and, good are you are you upset is there anything i can do like all that stuff like tell me what you need and then i'll tell you if i need anything that's it and it helps your members because here's the other thing to that it's tremendous value add if if this guy that you mentioned the pt that goes to him didn't have this opportunity He's going to find another dude that's not at Rife. So now he's no longer coming to your building on it. I mean, he's still coming to your building every day when he needs to do CrossFit again. Or, or he would just take a break in air quotes, meaning right. he's going to cancel his membership. Yeah. So right. you're keeping him in the ecosystem by right. providing the right value there. So, And this is the same reason I don't poo-poo on boot camps. Like boot camps can crush if you design them correctly, if you don't price them in the basement, and then if you have the right personality running them and promoting them, and then you put resources into it, and then you give it its own space. And in a lot of instances where a lot of people uh, screw this up too, in many instances, these entities should have their own brand. Like that's, that is that you don't want CrossFit yoga immediately like people are like, Oh, what does that mean? Like if it's going to be yoga, it needs to be, it needs to be appropriately named. Like we're going through that process with regard to our recovery stuff. Like that will be its own business inside of here with its own brand, its own website. It will just live inside the building. And what that right. allows you to do is budget. Well, it should pay for itself. It should be its own self-sustaining well, entity inside the walls of the business. And, and so this is something I, I tried to go back to years ago, which is like trying to get every square footage or every square foot of the facility to make money, right? So like a weightlifting makes money. The room next to that where we do the kids makes money. That's where we do kids classes. That's where we do foundations, personal training makes money. The recovery room, eh, sauna room does make money. Front lobby, retail makes money. Uh, massage therapy room makes money, right? Like all of these things that allow me to continue to reinvest back into the facility and into the staff and all these other things. But I say no to a lot of things. They're just like, oh, I want to do this. And I'm like, nope. I'm like, that doesn't align with what we do. It's not a good pairing. So do your own thing. 
Yeah. And when I say budget, I mean, that's exactly what you're doing. You're determining, okay, is this making enough money that I can spend more? The recovery room, I'm sure. Okay. Should we buy more Theragun? Should we put in a second right. sauna? Should we? Right. Or any, a bigger any, sauna. Hey, anything. You, they, you can look at, like you said earlier, otherwise people just kind of keep everything within the box. Like I'll do this, I'll do that versus looking at it as a whole. Those are now separate, but a whole in and of itself. Or you have them, and we kind of mentioned this before, I think we did, before about like, okay, so I put this other thing in there, but how are you feeding this additional service? Like, how do you create the natural overlap with the service? So let's use let's use the recovery stuff. Let's say like, we've got all that stuff. And admittedly, it does not do well yet because, and that's on me. It will, but that's because it, I designed it wrong the first time. Redesigning it, and it will crush the way that it should because there's other businesses, like that is their sole purpose, and they do really, really well. But how do I how do I create that natural overlap so that there is pe- there are people using it? So then we're like, okay, well, let's put it into the onboarding process. Like, let's give much of it away for free upon entry. At which point, people will repurchase. And then same thing if people were to go in and once that thing is up and running and it is its own self-sustaining, then maybe there's an opportunity for have like a reduced price combo membership when they come in to get recovery services. And now it makes a CrossFit client, right? And in that instance, it, it kind of does make sense to do some sort of reduced cost because my overhead's paid when it comes to that and it keeps people in the building. And it's just more things that bring people in the building that make the make what we offer here unique. Be like, oh, I can go there and I can get therapy, I can get recovery services, training, group training, weightlifting, and never have to leave the building? Okay, cool. Yeah. So, so let's talk best practices. Say someone's listening. We are optimizing. We're good. I want to offer something specialty. I want to offer an Olympic lifting class. First of all, don't just randomly throw it on your schedule because, hey, Thursdays are quiet. That will put that on there. Guess what? Thursdays are quiet for a reason. And the same people that aren't showing up on Thursdays are still not going to show up on Thursdays. Or they right. will for one week and then quickly fade. Right. So then the, the, before you do that, the, then it's always asked, you know, why? Why are you doing that? And typically, like, oh, because we could make more money here. Okay, cool. How could you make more money there with your core offering that you already do? Why would you not just fill it with more of your core offering, right? Financially on the spreadsheet, it makes more sense, right? I'm, I'm not splitting costs with somebody who's going to coach this thing. It's just more bodies in the building, more retail sales, more supplement sales, more referrals, like all those things. It's just, it's better that way. If I just do more of what I already do. So that's the first thing, but people think that they're going to put this other thing on top of it to solve that problem, which is they're trying to create more revenue. And I know people don't like to talk about money, but that's really the, that, that is the crux of why people do this. Now, after that, then you have to find the right person. You know, this is the analogy. It's like first get the right people on the bus and then you can put them in the right seats. The reason the, that Phil and I meshed is because he's the right person. Like we sat down, we talked, we had many, many things in common. Our athletic backgrounds were very similar. Both of our daughters were preemies. His wife, my wife and he share the same birthday. It was just like a lot of weird things are just like, this is cool. I like you. You're a good dude. This is going to work out. Oh, and you're really good at that. So let's make it happen. By the way, can so we when- talk about your, your daughter for a second? Is Please. that how she is that how she smiles or is that literally like Oh, my little sociopath? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> she like, is she is like- incapable. Dude, I you I the the public has only seen a small <laughs> portion of the pictures that my daughter has taken where you gotta I post le- that on your Instagram, where I legitimately le- I look at the picture and I look at my wife and I'm like, we birthed, primarily you birthed an axe murderer. <laughs> I looked at that picture and it looked like <laughs> she looks like a crazy person. Yeah, I guess there's that's a, one way to put it. There's there's another one from like maybe a year and a half ago. No, it can't be that long. Maybe like a year ago that we took out on the beach where they both look like crazy people. Like like my wife and I are smiling like normal people, and my son <laughs> looks like Chucky and she looks like an axe murderer. And I'm like, oh my God, what is wrong with our children? <laughs> I swear they're good looking kids, but when you put them in front of the camera, they look like 
insane people. No, she's a very cute child, but it was like that picture was like <laughs> it made me laugh. I was like, <laughs> I was like, is that truly her emotion? Like, is she if she's feeling that way, that's fine. Or no, when she... she smiles normally, but sometimes, but for some reason, when you're just like, all right, cloak and smile for the camera. Yeah, she it was puts a full on... picture for reference. <laughs> right. She put, yeah, it was her first group picture. She puts on that crazy face. <laughs> <laughs> it's but amazing. That's you have when, to like, post it. Can you Bobby post Millsaps, it on your personal? <laughs> Bobby Millsaps, she, she like texts me. She's like, send me one of those, print it out and send it to me. She's like, Logan is my spirit animal. I was like, she's a lot of people's spirit animal, bro. Like she is uh, unique is the way I would describe her. Yes. <clears throat> special. Yeah, she's special. <laughs> anyway. Go on That's to what so you were saying. I'm sorry. I totally took that. So, in. yeah, yeah, right. So, it's the, the, so first is like, why? Make sure you're not doing it for the wrong reasons. The second thing is make sure it's the, it's the right person. And then the third thing when you're going to do this, and it doesn't matter what the service is, like you should still go through this process. The third thing is make sure that it integrates. Make sure that there is overlap and both things feed each other. Because in a lot of instances, this the other thing you put on there just siphons off people from your core offering and it actually hurts the business because I, I had this other thing at a really, really low cost. And I take people from whatever, make it up numbers now, $150 a month down to $95 a month. So my average client value just plummets by a lot. And then with, because I didn't, I didn't walk through that process beforehand and think about that. I'm like, okay, what if we did do this? And then they shifted over here. I'm like, what would that mean? And you're like, oh, that would mean a disaster. Like, why would we design that? So those are like the three big things that I would look at if you're going to do that. Why am I doing it? Do I have the right person? And if and if and I'm doing it for the right reasons because I can and it makes sense and I've got the right person, then I need to sit down and put some legitimate thought into how am I going to integrate this and design it no different than I would design everything with intent within my business so that my referral program has you know, opportunities and that my, you know, socials and other workshops are designed to sell premium services and all these other things. Like that's, that's, that's it. It's, it's not complicated, but everybody jumps the gun and I've done this before. That's what I'm saying. Like, I know why you messed this up. Like, cause I've messed it up a lot. I, you know, I, I love it. And I think for people listening, they need to understand. I think it stems back to understanding why you opened the business too. I think for many people, they open this business because they love fitness, they love training right. people and they want to continue to do that and they'd like to make some money at it. There was never a point where you were like, I'm going to open this business and- at To make some a point, yoga studio. Well, and also at some point because I want to you know, make some money and enjoy life. And as soon as I get there, I'm going to try not to do that again. Like if you get to that point where- I think the misconception is there's nothing wrong with working four hours a day on your business. And then you have days like today, maybe for you where you're knee deep in coaching or you and I are working this weekend together, but that's not the norm. The norm doesn't that's have to be also like, crazy. That's also mode. we, we chose to do that though. Yeah. I'm saying the like norm, we don't have to, but like, right. we're like, Hey, well, let's knock this out. Let's get it done. This. And I would have, I had, I had four hours of coaching, ended up five. We had a, a, a quasi emergency with that. And somebody was like, Hey, and I was like, I got it. Don't worry about it. Like take care of what you need to take care of. And it was fine. I was already coaching most of the morning anyway. I was like, okay. So I get up two hours earlier, whatever. I like I had a good time with it. Right. It snowed here. It was like pretty snowed low. In, uh, Virginia. It did. Yeah. Shuts everything down. Cause people know how to drive, but, but you know, the, it's, um, it's yeah. because you live at this, you know, place. Not, I'm not talking about where you live literally, but, you know, when you live at this place of, okay, the gym is functioning, I need you at two hours earlier, okay, I can make that happen. If you're, like, already trying to cram in more and, you know, add more things, adding another two hours to your day is not feasible. No. You know, and, and I think people, and this isn't meant to become a therapy session, but it's like, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's like Fern loves his wife, Fern loves his two kids, Fern loves his coworkers that he wants to spend time with. Clearly, you know, we don't have to draw back to the 230 Fran, 234 Fran, sorry, but he's still <laughs> relatively fit. So he trains like, don't forget, like the benefit of running a successful business, no different than CrossFit. It's like, we love this CrossFit thing because it benefits our life. And then all of a sudden CrossFit becomes life. Same with your business. You, 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 
I'll let you wrap this up, but you open this business because you want to enjoy life. And then all of a sudden you stop enjoying life because you try to do too much with business. Right. I mean, and at the end of the day, I'm going to let everybody in on a little secret. This you don't shit love is supposed- your wife. I no, no, that is true. Okay, yes, you, that's you said that. Yeah, I, said that. You, so, I said that. I said that. You may, sociopaths. you may wake up in the middle of the night. And she's just standing over top of you. Logan, I knife. get the Logan yeah. face. If I woke yeah. up and saw Logan in that face, shit, shit your pants. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna let you guys on a little secret. This shit is supposed to be fun, and if it's not fun, you need to figure out why it's not fun, and then make it fun. Like that is that is part of that is uh, a key pillar of every single thing that I do here at CrossFit Rife is like, I do things that are going to make me want to be in the building all the time because I'm investing a ton of time and resources and effort and emotion and all that other shit. If it's not fun here, then I'm not doing any of that stuff. But if it is fun, then it just makes me do more. So all of that revolves around that. Now, it's not to say that it's all sunshine and rainbows and some days I don't want to run through head first. However, that's the small minority. Like this morning, it was like a little thing. I'm like, this is a real pain in the dick. And I'm like, I, so I like shot out an email. I was like, I'm sorry. That was a bit aggressive. Please fix that. But that's the point. Is like, it should be fun, right? That's what we're shooting for. And if it's not, you got to figure out what to do. And to the, basically, the, the fastest way to make it fun is stay on task with regard to your core offering. Fix that first. Then you can go to the other things and it'll still be fun. Yeah. As Ben and Jerry's would say, if it ain't fun, don't do it. And, you know, I think really what it comes down to is that's what Affiliate U was founded on. You know, people ask us what separates Affiliate U from other coaching. Yes, you are going to make more money. You are going to drive revenue. You're going to do all these things to have and run a successful business. But the foundation of it is you're going to love the business you go to every day. Is that it? We, is that a wrap? That's it. Uh, yeah, right. you blew it again. I feel like you never Shit. know when to cut it off. Shit, oh, I always it. say too much. Anyway. You're, yeah, I could imagine you on dates. Man. Look, well, we get Lindsay like, time to sneak in. I saw Lindsay yeah. sneak in the back there. Yeah, it's just like you're on a date and you're like, should I kiss you now? And you're like, I'm, nope, that time is gone. That time missed is it. gone. Missed you my window it. of opportunity. There she is. There she is, All right. everybody. All right, guys. Thanks for, thanks for listening to Best Hour of the Day. We'll see you on the next episode. So you never miss an episode of the podcast. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and on all major podcasting platforms at best hour of their day. Thank you so much for tuning in and for being a part of the best hour of our day. See you next time.